Here are 21 Final Cut settings that on or off could be ruining new editors. And make sure you pay attention because I'm going to be rapid fire through these. All right, so this first one is for when your library is absolutely massive in the gigabytes. So if you go into settings by hitting command comma and you go to editing and you click on playback, there's something that's on by default called background render. And pretty much what that means is after 0.3 seconds of you not moving the mouse, it's going to automatically render out what you have edited, causing more space to be filled on your hard drive. And most of the time, this is just unnecessary and you really don't need it while editing. If you really want to render something out, just select the area and click Command R and that will render out just that space. You see this orange line on the bottom of this clip right here? That means that I've used the clip and it's inside my timeline. For that to show, you have to go to View, Browser, and turn on Used media ranges. This is especially helpful if you have a lot of footage and you don't want to accidentally reuse the same clip. It'll tell you if it's already in the timeline. Okay, for this next one, if you go back into the settings and you go to the editing section, you'll see a button called position playhead after edit operation. Pretty much what that means is if this is on, it can get really annoying. If I go to put a title, it'll automatically move my playhead to the very end of it, which means if you want to go back, you'll have to move it all the way back and then edit from there, which can be very annoying and inconvenient. So by turning this off, whenever you go to place a title again, it'll just stay there and you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes when you're working with a lot of footage and a lot of effects, or just high quality footage in general, it can reach the point where it starts to lag a little bit on the viewer. In order to make that a little bit better, going on here to view and clicking on better performance can really help. Because what that does is it pretty much makes the quality of the viewer less so it's able to process more of what's going on. Now, if you want to see what the final effect looks like, then I would change it to better quality just so you can make sure that everything's looking right. In the settings tab, you'll click on general, and if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see color correction. Now by default, it's on color board. You wanna change that to color wheels. Now what that is, is whenever you go to color grade a clip and you click this little button, it'll automatically make this the default. Now the difference between color board and color wheels are, there's a lot more room to make corrections and move everything how you want it to look. Now you can see the layout that I have right now. Something that's really annoying, especially with color grading or if you're trying to see effects on the side here, is having to scroll up and down just to make simple adjustments. Well, now you won't really need to do that because in this gray space area right here, if you double click, you get the whole side here all to yourself. In the import tab on settings, you'll see at the very top here next to files, there's copy library storage location or leave files in place. If you have a lot of 4K footage that you're working with and you already have the footage on a hard drive or in a folder, you do not need to be copying it to the library. This does what it says and copies all of the footage, which in result makes the library take up hundreds or thousands of gigs, depending on how much footage you have. So most of the time it's best just to leave files in place. Now in the editing tab here, next to audio, you'll see show reference waveforms. What this does is if you have some audio and you decide to bring the volume all the way down, you'll slightly see the waveforms of the original audio for reference if you're cutting. Now if this was off, like you'd be able to guess, there's nothing there whenever you do that. So it's good to keep this on for reference when you're editing and cutting clips together. Back in import once again, if you go down here to transcode, you wanna make sure create optimized media is off. Because what that does is it takes all the footage and whatever you have inside the library and encodes it in Apple ProRes, making a copy, which as you can guess, takes up a lot of space when you're working on the library. In the playback section, you'll see right next to playback is create optimized media for multicams. And what that does is if you're making a multicam, like I just explained, it'll take that whole thing and copy it to the library in Apple ProRes and take up a lot more space than you'd want it to, which is why you'd want this off as well. 
If you go over to this little button right here and you go all the way down here, you'll see duplicate ranges. With that checked on, whenever you duplicate something in the timeline, you'll see some stripes here. And if you get rid of it, you won't. It's another good way to know what you're putting in the timeline and making sure you're not using the same stuff over and over again. At the very top of editing and settings, you'll see show detailed trimming feedback. What does that mean? Well, with this off, let's say you're wanting to move the cut that you just made in your video. You'll only see one screen on your viewer. So if you turn on show detailed trimming feedback, you'll be able to compare the cut before and the cut after on two different screens. It's especially good if you're moving the clip around and you're wanting to see the start and finish of what you're using. See this little button right here? Yeah, you wanna turn that on because what that does is whenever you're reviewing your own edits, Instead of this right here just going away and you're not able to see it, if you turn this on, it puts it in the direct center of the timeline when you're playing it back. Let's say there's something in the title section that you use all the time. For me, I use adjustment layers quite a bit. If you right click on that, there's a button here called make default title. You can do this with any title you want. If you click that and you go to the timeline and click control T, it'll place it right where your playhead is, making it very convenient if you wanna quickly add some adjustment layers or whatever you want on top of your timeline. Everybody knows what this button does. It's the transform button. You can zoom in or zoom out or do whatever you want with this. Now, let's say you're wanting to zoom in and you're trying to position it correctly and see what's being cut out. By going to this button right here, turning that on, you'll be able to see on the edges right here what's gonna be cut out in your transform, which is pretty helpful, especially if you wanna line stuff up correctly. Let's say you're doing some color grading and you've got a vector scope right here. If you go to this button and click on it and go all the way down to view, you'll see show skin tone indicator. And what this does is if there was a person on the screen here, in this area where this line is, is the general place that the color of skin tone is positioned. So let's say this was a person's skin somewhere on here. You would be able to move the hue making it a more natural color, especially when color grading. There's a button over here next to your viewer called snapping, and you wanna turn that on. What it is, is what it sounds like. If you make a cut and you wanna quickly go to that, it'll automatically snap the playhead to it. Or let's say you have an adjustment layer and you wanna quickly line it up exactly where the cut is. This makes it very convenient and easy to line it up where you want it. Because if this was off, it's a lot more difficult to try and line it up 100%. Audio is one of the most important parts in editing. And one thing you wanna make sure is that it's not peaking, because that's where distortion comes from. And if you go to this little green area, the meter, audio meter, and you click on it, it'll show you a much larger version of it. So you can easily see or determine whether it's peaking or not, which makes it very helpful, especially in the editing process. Let's say I'm color grading and I want to position everything perfectly for me that I like to use for it. So make this a little bit smaller so I can see the waveforms. If I don't want to have to change it every single time and move it and set it up perfectly, if you click on window and go to workspaces right here, you can save the workspace. Title it whatever you want, click save, so that when it is different and you're ready to start color grading again, you go to workspaces and click on the one you saved. Just like that, it's back. There's this button right here called skimming. And when that's off, you can't look through unless you move the playhead itself. But if you turn that on, it automatically scrolls through, which can be very helpful, especially if you're trying to cut at specific spots. By clicking command alt K, this will bring up your keyboard. You can move around and customize anything you want in this, which can be very helpful, especially if you're trying to make your editing workflow as convenient as possible. For instance, one of the things I changed was instead of having to press Command B to cut, all you have to press is B. It's something small, but you'd be surprised how much it actually helps. Now there's a lot more things than just settings that go into editing itself. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can click here to watch it. I'll see you at the next edit.